What's going down, YouTube? T Dog back at it again with another video for y'all. Right now I'm uh, on my lunch break. Just going for a little ride during my lunch break since I you know got nothing else to do. Figured I'd motor vlog while I'm here doing this. I do got a subject in mind this time. Uh, this subject's actually been touched on by other small motor vlogging channels such as myself. Why do I ride? Or why do you ride? Everyone's got a reason why they ride. Ooh. Oh, beautiful weather today, by the way. Damn. I'm also uh, wearing my Icon jacket. The new one that I got the uh, other week. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already knew. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna turn around. There's a spot down the highway that uh, I would want to go to. So, why do I ride? We all have our reasons to ride. Why we like riding, why we like bikes, why we like motorcycles. A lot of y'all know that I've always been a car guy, and I've also been a truck guy for a long time. Before I got into bikes, I was really into the off-roading community, specifically the Toyotas. Uh, speaking of, that's a nice 4Runner. The thing is, I've always been interested in bikes for the past like over eight years. Uh, it all started when I was in the Marine Corps, and I had a lot of you know buddies that were into riding bikes. Yeah, I've, I've talked to them about it and whatnot. You know, it's all good. It sparked my interest, but I never actually uh, went with it just because I was focused on at first cars and then eventually trucks. After I got out, you know, I started thinking about it more. The more I thought about it, the more I wanted to do it. But the thing is, I just never did anything with that interest. As I explained before, I just never did anything with it, and it took me till like eight years later. I got out in 2010, eight year, uh, almost eight years later. Towards the end of 2017 is when I finally got my license, and a week or two after that, I got my uh, Vulcan S. There's that underlying the reason why I like to ride and why I like motorcycles, but. It goes a little deeper than that. Back in December 2016, my girlfriend at that time, we broke up, and we were together for like six years, you know, like for a long time. I loved her, she loved me. And we broke up because of mutual reasons. I guess mutually broke up because of, it's not that we didn't love each other, it's just that, you know, our lives were going to different different directions, and we couldn't, uh, we couldn't meet each other in the middle with it. And so like, at first I was fine, or at least I thought I was. I did, you know, meet a girl or two later on, but then I realized, you know, eventually, like, you know, I'm not over my ex. It's unfair for me and for another woman to, you know, be in a relationship with when I'm not over her emotionally, mentally. You know, I just decided to stay single. But I was so used to being in a relationship that, you know, being alone was weird to me. It was kind of, most of 2017, I was pretty much depressed. Every day I put on a smile, but really deep down inside I was hurt, I was lonely, I was depressed. And not just because I hurt, but I was also getting, you know, pretty unsatisfied with life in general. Where I was at in life. What I was doing with my life, and where I was going with my life. Just, I turned 30 last year, 2017, and I'm like, it all started to hit me. Like, the well, my life is, is gone from my life nothing to show for in my life right now. I got, you know, nothing. I got nothing really. I just waking up, going to work, you know, go to the gym, go home, sleep, and do it all over the next day. It was getting really like, you know, like I was like, like on autopilot or something. It was getting me down pretty bad. And eventually it got to the point to where I didn't even want to do anything with an off-road community, with a Toyota community anymore. Like, like I was done with that too, like that wasn't exciting me anymore. I mean, I'm still friends with them, I just don't do anything with them anymore. I even took my 4Runner, which I was building at the time, to be like a pre-runner. I reverted her back to stock. It's, she's currently stock right now, I'm just using her as a daily, a dedicated cage. And then I kept thinking like, well, you know what, you know what, probably make me feel happy again if I went back into the car community. Started looking for, for cars again to start building as a project. All kinds of cars. Uh, at one point, I almost pulled the trigger on a couple of right-hand drive cars imported from Japan just because it was different, interesting, unique. Eventually, I decided not to because financially, I couldn't really, it would be hard on me. Also, the long term, I know I have uh, several friends who have uh, right-hand drive cars and they say how, like, they're horrible for daily and it's kind of tough, I guess, on them in terms of, like, 
maintenance. And then one day I woke up, the random thought of motorcycles popped in my head again. So I started thinking like, hey, you know, I've always been interested in bikes. Why not I just go for it? Say, f***ing, I'm 30. Let's do things that I've always wanted to do. And top of my list was motorcycles. I signed up for a motorcycle class and look, lucky me, my motorcycle class happened to be scheduled the, uh, it's like the weekend or two after uh, Harvey down here in Houston. So <laughs> uh, I guess I lucked out on that. It was crazy because that's the first time I've ever been on a motorcycle on that you know, safety class. I've rode bicycles all you know, in my younger years, but I never rode anything motorized. I grasped the concept pretty pretty quick. It was fun. Like even though we were doing like slow maneuvers and stuff like that in the parking lot, it was it was fun. After I completed it, I just couldn't wait to get my own bike. I always wanted to go here. I see it quite quite often, but I never actually do anything here. I guess there's some people here, but anyways, so like, it was funny too because once I got that Vulcan S, it was a lot bigger and a lot more different than those little two Suzuki 250s that we were using in the class. I, I rode that thing around my neighborhood for like a week, maybe a little bit more, just trying to get used to it and whatnot. Oh shit. Oh damn, these are soft, soft ass mud. People probably go here to off-road. And if I had a dual sport, I'd do the same. I kind of want a dual sport. Like, I want to I want a dual sport because I want to eventually have a supermoto at, at one point. I don't know anytime, anytime soon. But yeah, it took me about a week to get used to it. I, I just stuck to like 15 miles an hour and below. Going just 10 miles an hour was kind of scary to me. Like, for one, it's a brand new bike. I didn't want to fuck it up. And then two, I, I didn't want to hurt myself. <laughs> Now for about a week, I started riding out on the, on the highways outside my house, and I was going below the speed limit. I'm talking like 45 in a 55. It was scary going that fast because if because of that sensation of speed, just feeling the elements on you, and that that it was scary, but it was exciting. I had the time of my life. I pretty much fell in love, I guess you can say. It was scary, but it's exciting, and I was hooked. I didn't. I don't know how else to say it, but it was just a feeling that I've never felt before in my life. Like it was so exhilarating. It was fun. I, I have no other way to explain it other than that. All my years of being in car, being into cars, being in different kinds of cars, being in different kinds of trucks, off-roading in different kinds of uh, terrains and stuff. It's just they were, those were all fun and all, but none of them gave me that feeling that this bike gave me. I was certain I found my thing. I finally found a thing that. I cannot live without. Like I could live without a race car. I could live without a jacked up truck. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like hobbies that I th and things that I like that I could live without and have no problem living without. I can't see myself living without a bike. This little thing, this little 650 cruiser, opened my eyes to a whole new world. The only regret I have is not getting into bikes sooner. I'm pretty sure there's there's some kind of reason the universe, you know, or God, whoever, whatever you believe in, made me wait almost 10 years to get into bikes. It's better late than never. Oh, on top of all that, started, I started hanging out with other bikers in the bike community here in Houston. The military was the last thing that I was a part of, you know, where I had experienced brotherhood, camaraderie, people you don't even know or meet, but then like they're, they're so eager to help you and hang out with you and, and whatnot. I mean, yeah, I've experienced some of that in the car community and uh, off-road community, but none of them was nearly as strong as what, I felt, what I've experienced so far in these last several months in the bike community. It's amazing. And not only that, but bikers, they go out and ride, you know, they, out, they go out and do stuff. It's like almost every day, almost every weekend, there's like, who's out riding? Who's, who, who wants to go do stuff? Who wants to do that? Who wants to go ride? Well, you know, with the other communities, it was kind of like that, but most of the time we go to a meet, park at a parking lot and just talk and hang out. Like bikers, they, they use their machines. That's not including, you know, truck guys that actually do go off-road all the time. And those people, like, I salute them. Or, you know, car guys that go out on the track and race their cars and all that stuff. Let's get out of here. This bike, this lifestyle, like it helped me. Like damn near a year I was in a funk. I just couldn't get out of. She helped me get out. My quality of life is better. I'm actually going out and doing stuff now. Instead of just being held up at home if I wasn't at work. I'm happier 
this thing gives me excitement. Oh, Jim Gaffigan is coming here. Nice. And I know I'm not the only one who's felt this way. I know there's a bunch of y'all out there that felt this way. Matter of fact, I've met quite a few uh, or and talked to quite a few uh, other former military guys who started riding bikes. And a lot of them have actually told me, like, straight up, this bike has saved my life. Which tells me that they were going through a dark time in their life, whether it be PTSD or you know, personal stuff, like maybe divorces or whatever, you, what have you, that can cause extreme stress to someone. Or they felt like me, where I got in Marine Corps and kind of just did stuff here and there, and then, you know, you woke up one day feeling unsatisfied with life, that you're going nowhere in life or whatnot, and then you get a bike, and things change. Your life changes, your mentality changes, you finally feel free about from stuff like when you're riding that's why i ride that's why i love this this bike ride. that's why i love motorcycles more so than i ever thought i would yes it's fun of course it's fun and bikes are cool and sexy yeah of course it's because of what the lifestyle has done for me mentally and for my life is why i love it it brought me out of a bad mindset or a bad state of mind i should say so yeah that's why i ride and that's why i love motorcycles if you like the video hit the like button Please subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. Go ahead and comment and share if you'd like to. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.